Hello, this is Stephen Hughes with Musical Accents in Dallas, Texas. Today I'm going to be giving a video tutorial on how to use one of my favorite apps of all time, Read Rhythm, uh, in your piano or music lessons, any lesson really as a musical instructor. And recently there has been a new update to this app that has just really blown my mind. I've been waiting for forever. The ability to edit the rhythms to your liking and then sync them. So let's go ahead and go into the app. And uh, the, the app name on the iTunes store is actually different than Read Rhythm than the app name when you load it into your, um, onto your iPad. It's called Rhythm Sight Reading Trainer. So make sure to look that up on iTunes and purchase it right away so you can start messing around with it. And the opening screen, you'll probably have something like this. You'll have a very basic level of rhythm. You'll have a, either a three or four measure rhythm. And then, of course, we can edit that to our uh, liking. What I'd like to do is first go through the two modes that are presented. We have a practice mode where you will play, you'll press this play button, and then you can practice counting, tapping. Uh, you can practice tapping on the drum as well. And then you'll be able to test your ability to, to uh, tap the rhythm out as well. So let's go ahead and get this started. We have the metronome set at 80. Let's go ahead and bump it up a little bit. I'm just going to hold down, and I'm gonna actually drop it down to a faster rhythm. Let's just do 100, make it even. And I'm gonna press this practice mode button, the play button, right in the center of the screen. And what I typically have my students do is count out loud, and then tap on the side, and then tap on the drum. And also have my students, uh, when they're able and ready, tapping their foot on the downbeat uh, to really establish a good solid presence of where the downbeat is at all times. One, two, three, four. 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 One. And there is a little bit of latency, just a tad latent tad bit of latency in working from my iPad to my computer. So I am a I was a tad late getting started out there. But you get the idea. You have a visual representation of the beats. You can actually see if you're ahead or behind. If it's a bright green color, then you are right on the beat. If it's a dark green color, then you are just a tad late. If you or you're a tad early, and if it's a, uh, if you have a red color, then you're, you, or a light red color, you're a tad late. If you have a dark red color, I believe it's, that is when you are really late. So let's go ahead and uh, use the test mode here. I'm going to press this button. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Well done. Now what you'll see is uh, actually the blue indicates that you're just slightly behind and I believe it's the red is that you're slightly early. And so the colors give you a good indication if you're on the beat or slightly off the beat. And then it shows exactly the placement of each repetition. Um, I have mine set for three times as the measure of the test. You can set it to however many times you would like. And really, what's really cool about this is what I have my students do is send this to me as an assignment. So you can press the mail and then you can actually see these images in your email. It's really easy to do. It takes about 10 seconds. You just do that. You type, 
type in the name or the email address and you can send it right to the student can send it right to the teacher okay so let's go back to the app and what I'd like to do is show some of the features that are really unique all right random exercises basically give you an option uh, to not do it in a sequential order I mean you can you can work within a certain level like just whole half and quarter notes adding eighth notes more eighth notes adding so you can see exactly what's happening in each level what you're adding okay and we get to 16th note triplets and then violation of the imaginary bar line rule so that's a really a true test of being able to count rhythms no bar lines and then you can practice swing swing rhythms three four it has pretty much and then we have compound time six eight two two four two five four so we have a, a mixture of odd time compound time and simple time and then of course you uh, there's probably about I believe about 20 to 25 exercises in each one of those levels you can practice now what if you want to work on a particular exercise and actually see the rhythms well if we go to fixed exercises you can see the rhythms displayed okay then you can start to see the eighth notes being added and tied and then syncopations along with rest triplets and then 16th notes along with ties okay adding eighth note or eighth rest 16th rest and then more or less common meters and then just extra set of mixed exercises if it missed anything really you want to work on then you have those exercises there and then more complicated rhythms and then we get to some swing patterns so on and so forth okay so you can actually you know you have random or fixed exercises and I go back between those two when I assign students we're gonna skip favorites for now and we're gonna go to the exercise options right now I have my um, count play count as three when you do the test mode but you can set it all the way up to five okay then you can mail the exercise to the student if they have the app uh, so they can work on it from home and then you can mail any one of your favorites that you have set up and we'll, we'll talk about that in just a minute okay then you have progress reports on certain exercises now as a student you would send those to the teacher the teacher wouldn't need to send this as a student okay and then we have uh, we have other areas here landscape format and then we can add swing this is really cool here so any of those rhythms you can add swing I currently have it as on because I'm working on some swing rhythms with students and then you can change the type of swing you can change it from from a medium to a heavy swing to a late swing uh, just depending on how you teach swing rhythms and then of course accents you can apply accents to your um, to your odd time signatures and if you want to add some more ties across the bars so a lot of a lot of options here to work with and then there's some challenges here that um, are really interested interesting um, note duration like you have to be more specific you get to actually hold the notes down for the duration so you have to really you know for a dotted quarter note you have to hold it down for a, a beat and a half you can't just tap it and then we have ear training mode which is an interesting mode of being able to replay the rhythm and tap it back expert mode just makes it more advanced tap the beat and the rhythm you have to tap your left hand and the right hand at the same time okay and then endurance test these are longer exercises and you have to keep focused speeding up the test just speeds up the tempo and so on and so forth 
and then counting six, eight, and two, which is important. It's really one how you want to fill six, eight is in two. Okay, and then we have to the tapping settings, and uh, there's a lot of things here that you can um, that you can change. You can have just one tap button versus two tap buttons. You can um, edit the sensitivity of the microphone. So we're going to go back here, and I want to talk about uh, there's alcohol, there's player sound. You can change the sound of the tick and the talk sound. Okay. And then the display, you can change the theme. All of that is really not important in this in the the teaching format. You know what we want to do is give our students exercises that will help them to learn um, how to play their pieces better. Obviously, so we are going to go to a random exercise. Let's say, well, sorry, fix exercise. And let's say that you don't have an exercise that um, you want to work on. Let's say, let's pick three, four. Done. Okay. And we need to take off swing. So we're going to go back to exercise options. Take off the swing. Done. Okay. You see this button right there. Whoops, right here at the top. You click on that button and then you can do a number of things. You can modify, you can add to favorites, and you can reset the stats. We're going to modify this exercise. Okay, this is the update I've been waiting for so long. And if you'll notice that this beat is highlighted, and so then you can choose any one of these rhythm patterns here. Okay, so these are various quarter note, dotted quarter note, eighth note patterns combined with sixteenths over here, and then just mainly sixteenths in this right hand column here. So I'm going to change beat one to, let's see here, two eighth notes. And then I'm going to change beat two to a sixteenth followed by a dotted eighth. And then we'll just leave beat three. Then we're going to go beat one here. We're going to choose a two beat pattern, maybe an eighth note followed by a dot quarter note. And then maybe four sixteenths here. We're just going to have a little fun with this. We'll leave beat one as a half note. And then beat three. Let's select, a, let's select a 16th note followed by a dotted eighth. And then for this last measure, we'll do four sixteenths. Yes, we're making this a little bit more difficult to get an original exercise here. And then beat three, let's make it two sixteenths and an eighth rest. Now, I'm not sure if this is an actual pattern from a song. But let's just pretend that it is. And the idea here is you can modify any exercise to fit a rhythm pattern that you would like to focus on for a particular piece. And once, and you can also edit the ties. This is a really cool feature too. So let's say that you want to add a tie, B3. You go to Edit Ties. And then you're going to press Toggle Tie. And now that's tied over to beat one. And we'll do this on a few others as well. We're going to select beat one of the third measure. And we're going to toggle tie. And then let's go to beat two of the last measure, toggle tie. Okay. Then we're going to press done. Okay. Now, if you want to save it, go back up to the top. Add to favorites. Now it's added to favorites. You cannot save this as a rhythm pattern in the actual, uh, you know, as as part of the as part of your fixed exercises here. But what you can do is you can save favorites. I'm not sure how many you can save, but I'm sure that if you needed to remove some, you could, and then you could add more. 
Okay, let's see how this works now. Let's see how my sight reading goes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's go to the test mode. I am working with just a slight lag. So bear with me here. Okay, let's go to test mode. One, two, two three. three. Well done. Okay, and you can also control the actual amount that it deviates uh, from, you know, a perfect hit. You know, there's like a plus minus there in terms of, you know, if you're close enough, it'll still give you 100% there. So I hope that gives you some help and some insight and maybe uh, really gets you excited about using this app in lessons. I find it to be an extremely versatile app uh, for all types of students. And uh, especially if they're on the road or if they're on vacation, they can just practice these apps um, on their phone or their iPad away from the piano. And it's a great way to get them continuing to work on their, um, you know, their rhythm reading and just overall sense of feel of, uh, of reading rhythms, tempo, um, and getting them prepared to play their pieces or just um, getting them uh, a little bit lo more locked in to rhythm in general. Okay, see you next time.